Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Vlogs. Tracy here and oh my goodness, what a day of <laughs> Well, yesterday it started that we had that leak. Remember I told you and Gary and his brother were trying to sort that out. <laughs> oh, you know, you think, oh well, that's it. You know, what else can go wrong? Well, Gary was at work and <laughs> postman came, parcels went off, um, everything was fine. Um, well, actually, though, this is <laughs> before that, I was still in my nighty at this time and so lucky, I tell you. I was in my nightdress and um, because there was this flood yesterday, I had dehumidifiers going in the uh, conservatory because the floor got very wet. So we put towels down and then put the dehumidifiers on to to dry it up. And uh, I thought, oh, it stopped. I'll have to empty that. So I went out into the conservatory to to empty the chamber. And um, I shut the door of the uh, the kitchen leads into the conservatory. It's like a long passage conservatory and then a bigger one at the end. I shut the door. So I had my little chamber with the water it's full up and I went to open the kitchen door and it wouldn't open and I was I thought it was like it was locked but there is no lock on that door at all and um I couldn't turn the knob and it was just what on earth is going on and I just realized that I was stranded in the conservatory without any clothes without my phone um and just not able to get in the house. I was just out, not in the street, but, well, street, can hardly call what I've got out there a street, but you know what I mean? Not out in the road, but um, I couldn't get in the house. And I was, I had so much to do today and I, I tried and tried. And I had no way of telling Gary. I thought, I can't go round to Colin and say, oh, Colin, um, <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm a nighty on. <laughs> And it was raining. It's raining and miserable today. So uh, I had this little idea. I thought, oh, Gary left the bedroom window. There's two bedroom windows and one has got my blind up. So, you know, I wouldn't want to go in there and ruin everything. But the other bedroom had the window open. And I remember seeing the little, because it's inside the house. It used to be the outside of the house before this conservatory was built. So it opens up into the conservatory. So I thought, oh, I can remember yesterday, that bedroom, the window wasn't locked, you know, the actual thingy. Hopefully it's still the same. So I went around the back and it was still open. So I pulled the door open and I thought, how do I get up there? Because, and luck, as luck would have it, there was a step ladder beside the freezer because we've got a freezer out there it's more of a utility room than a conservatory we've got a washing machine and a big tall freezer and between the two was this little step ladder so i thought ah oh, okay it was just slightly too short and i thought oh no i'm gonna have to stand on the window because there's not really a window sill and i thought i hope i don't break the window you know because it's only plastic it's like upvc stuff so i kind of Got up there and there, and there wasn't room for both my feet. <laughs> I had my slippers on. And so I was trying to manoeuvre. And inside, there's there's a, a headboard that's shaped like this, like a temple. You know, like um, like that. Raw iron thing, it just goes up. It's not really raw iron, it's tubular. But So anyway, I thought, oh no, it's... So the window is open, but halfway across it is this <laughs> barrier. So I thought, I've got to get over that. I've got to get on the ledge, get over that, and try and get in somehow. <laughs> window! So anyway, first attempt failed. And the second attempt, I kind of got myself in. And then I had no choice but to launch myself, because it's a bed. And I had to launch myself at the bed. Because cocking my leg over this, I'm not painting a good picture here, am I? It wasn't, it was a, it was a nightmare. Cocking my leg over this 
bed end I was too short so it, I was kind of riding it if you know what I mean I was sitting on it and it wasn't like I could just cock my leg over and get in it was it was just too high so I was, oh. so I just threw myself onto the bed hurt myself and I thought oh at least I'm in the house so um postman came and when I opened because like as luck would have it from in the kitchen you could open that door just from in the conservatory you couldn't get back in so I thought you know I've got to remember not to shut that door so posty came and I left the door open and he took the stuff and I was busy in the house doing bits and pieces and I thought oh, I gotta go could go out in the um, yarn van so as luck would have it this time because I had to get in, oh, you know, it could have been so much worse. I have a, a key for the yarn van, single key. And I have one on my bunch of keys. And as luck would have it, I had the bunch of keys in my hand and my phone. And I shut the door and I walked down the conservatory and I looked back and thought, no, you didn't just shut that door. So I went back and I tried the handle and it was dead. It was just hanging down. I'm oh, oh, not getting through that window again. No way. I hurt myself bad enough last time. I had to take painkillers and I winded myself as well, which uh, was a bit um, much for someone who's not done anything like that for, well, a good few years. So anyway, I thought, no, I'm not going to do that again. And I thought, I know get in the car and uh, make my way towards Gary anyway and then I'd brainwave and I thought Michael's thinner than me and he's very agile and as he's got longer legs he could just hop over that thing so I called him and he wasn't in <laughs> so he wasn't even anywhere near so I thought oh well that's not going to work is it so I phoned Gary and he was having a meeting at work and he didn't answer the phone and I thought maybe he's in the meeting then so I'll just go luckily I was dressed because obviously it was after the postman I'll just go back home and I'll either go and have a cup of tea with Colin until Gary gets back but I had so much to do or I could just actually go out in the yarn van and do bits and pieces out there so that's what I did I went out there and um I've been doing a few few bits out there but doing it slowly like a little bit here a little bit there well I had a major onslaught of it today because I had nothing else to do so I totally I, I must have collapsed about 12 boxes of various sizes where I used to have stuff in them and now I've got the plastic boxes to put them in our places that they can live like those drawers so I'm um, I got rid of all those unnecessary boxes which suddenly made an awful lot of space out there that I was missing and um, I, I got those three big boxes at the back at the bottom now with my yarn in there's still not there's still more yarn if I'd taken it out of the bags and put it in the boxes it would have been more than enough room but I just put the bags in so when Gary makes my cubbies I've got two of these units and when he makes those, then I can put them on that shelf next to the others and get rid of a lot of stuff and it'll be really clear out there. I can't believe how almost clear it is now. It's really, really good. So then I thought, what am I going to do with myself? And I had so much to do. And I thought, you know what? Out there is this equipment that I bought ages ago. And it was, what if I can't get another one of these things, these gimbals that I record on? Because they're... Um, They've made about five or six since that one. But what if you just can't get any more of those? I've got two, but they're, you know, temperamental, really. So I ordered this equipment that, um, it's like a framework that I can use to do a tutorial. It's not ideal, because obviously doing it the way I do it now, I can see what I'm, where my hands are doing in the viewfinder. And so I can see if I go off. Whereas with that one, it just looks straight down and I can't, and I'd have to be doing this, looking over it to see what I was doing. So I thought I'd do an open with me, a book. And so there's a couple out there that I hadn't done before. So I did it. And I don't think I was, I don't, 
I don't think it was brilliant because I think towards the end I was moving the book about a bit much and but you can you can watch it for me and tell me if it was awful but I, f I did apologize and say in it you know that this is the first time I've ever used this equipment I wouldn't be using it if I wasn't locked out so um yeah I had an eventful day I did so then when we finally when Gary got home I looked at the time and I thought he must be home by now and when I come in he was doing the door <laughs> he was actually fixing it but now it's temperamental on the inside but we want to keep the turning knob uh, on the inside because the kids can't open it and otherwise they'd be opening the door and they could get out the front or they could go out the back without us knowing it you know you don't really want the kids escaping especially one of them exactly yeah he, he would definitely escape Tyler anyway um what have I got else to tell you um I told you most of this as I was kind of in my spiel um yeah i did have like loads and loads to do because we're going to comic con tomorrow and uh, i wanted to get all my stuff together as well as the videos that i've got to make and i've lost my one of my phones now the one that i do the out and abouts with i cannot find it anywhere and i also usually record um the open with me the book reviews so the last time i had it was when I did a book review because I think the last thing we did was we, we went out and about but I think I did a book review after that so wherever it has gone it's disappeared off the face of the earth and I've looked I have literally looked everywhere and I've taken stuff apart so you know if I've got a bag with some yarn in it and a, a whip I'll look in that bag and I've put all these bags together and took them now outside into the yarn event so that I've got more space and uh, I don't know I've just been looking absolutely everywhere but I have this vague memory of something falling and it might have even been what I was recording and I just said oh um drop something so I've got, I've got this vague memory but I've looked I've looked over there where I thought it might have dropped but the only other place is over there um, I'm going to have that corner out in a sec, but I, I'm i really at a loss. You know, I, f I don't feel like it's there, but I'm absolutely dumbfounded. But the thing is, um, I need that 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 phone, that phone before um, filming some of the bits at Comic-Con, because I do have the one that I'm using now and my actual phone. But, um, yeah... It's not really my recordy phone. Um, and I think I've told you everything that's on my list. Well, hey, I've got a cup of tea. Cheers, my dears. The only thing that I didn't have when I was out in the Isle of Am was a toilet. And I thought, oh, no, what am I going to do? But there is always Colin next to us, so I was fine. I did make myself a cup of tea and I worried. What am I going to do? I need a loo. <laughs> it's like camping. It was. Very much so. Okay. This is our picture. We've got, that's the lady who shouts at the droids. Um, and Mando. I can't see anybody else in that picture. I don't think. Very, they're always dark, they're always kind of gloomy and dark. What a day, I tell you. I, I, I did it last night, couldn't sleep that well, and um, I think it's where I've been going to bed so late, and it's got me into a pattern. So, I um, I wrote a list of all the things I need. I know I forgot sunscreen, that wasn't on the list, so I wrote it down on some piece of paper here thinking. Please look at that and don't forget the sunscreen. Because although it's raining and gloomy and horrible now, it's meant to be really nice over the next few days. Okay, let's have the joke, shall we? I need one. I need one, I tell you. I really do. So, those were the mama's words. Um, this one's mum jokes. 
I learned to cook from my mother. I made a point of watching everything she did so I could do everything the opposite way. <laughs> my mum, funny enough, wasn't a bad cook when I was a child. Um, but at least I thought my mum was an amazing cook. She made the most amazing roast dinners and we always had really, really nice food, you know. She was a very good cook. My dad liked his food, so. But over the years, my mum got very slap hazard when it come to cooking. And her timings were all off and she really had the can't be bothered attitude. So my sister and brother and myself, when we reminisce about mum, and um, especially her cooking, we do have a few like real hilarious tales. She used to make roast potatoes and she'd cook them for so long that all the insides would come out. And so when you, they've got like armor plated. So when you put your fork in, then just fat would leap out and squirt you right in the eye. And we used to call them armor plated fat balls. <laughs> But she was, before, you know, young when we were younger, a really good cook. Amazing. Absolutely loved everything she did. Maybe I was just used to it. I don't know. But no, I, honestly, it was very enjoyable, her food. But it did get really bad. <laughs> it did. It got quite... So I was quite lucky. In the end, she lived with us and she didn't cook anymore. Anyway. She always thought she was brilliant, even when she'd lost it. You know, <laughs> she still thought she was brilliant. And if you made anything nice, she didn't like to say that was nice because she wanted to sort of make it like, I'm, oh, I could have done that better. It's not as good as mine. That was what she always used to say. Not as good as mine. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, like we'd, on the way home from my sister's after having an amazing dinner, she'd say, not as nice as mine. <laughs> no. The armour plated fat balls, so much nicer. <laughs> Bless her. She was amazing in her day, you know. But she just got the, I don't know, lost it completely. It is easy to lose, though. I can remember when I was married, I used to do all the cooking, when the, you know, from day one. When the kids were little, I did all the cooking. And then I started, I went to uni and my ex used to get home before me. So he started doing the kids tea and gradually he took it away from me. And sometime later, I kind of was standing in the kitchen thinking, I, don't, I honestly don't know which way is up in the kitchen anymore. I don't know what to do. I thankfully got it all back, but I could open the fridge and just make a dinner out of what was in the fridge and, and throw things together and they'd be great. Um, you know, if I think, oh, I'll make a stew with that and it would just all turn out. Um, just instinctively, you know. Don't do that so much anymore. Diet's going really well though. Even though I was, <laughs> especially as I was locked out, I couldn't eat, you know, couldn't eat anything. I was totally and utterly starving when it came to uh, dinner time. Anyway, I'm going to get off and upload this. So I'm going to still do some videos while I'm away. Um, so um, I won't be completely um, off, you know, but I don't know what kind of, uh, I can't say the word routine. It's a dirty word. I don't like it at all. But I don't know what kind of time I'll have. But I'll definitely do some out and abouts and um shorts and stuff like that now some of my videos might end up on rocksteady because they are not necessarily um i don't even like putting my out and abouts on but i do them as a kind of a under the guise of a chat so um i get them i have put a couple on here but anyway thank you for watching and uh i'll see you guys on the next one bye for now